All right, well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening for everyone around the world, wherever you may be. Uh, and welcome to the latest VIA Live product training webinar. And we're thrilled today to be hosting the team from Wombi to talk to you about their product, BillyPod. And I'll let them talk a bit more in detail about that in just a few minutes. But before we get started, for those of you new to the webinar series or new to VIA Global Health, I wanna just introduce quickly about what we do so you know the benefits of working with us. So VIA Global Health is a medical sourcing platform which allows you to source, quote, purchase and ship products from around the world and have those delivered directly to your door no matter where you are. Uh, so there's a few ways you can actually do this and the idea is to make it faster, easier and more affordable for you to source these products. So what you can actually do is just look through our product categories on our, our basically an online catalog where you can look for exactly the category of products that you sell or you have customers asking about. So for example, the maternal newborn health, if you click that, then that'll take you to this page where it's all just maternal newborn health products. So you can see that and you can obviously see quite a few products here because that's one of our specialties that you can roll through. And in that category, you would see obviously the Billy Pod from the Wombi team. You can see a few other products they have as well. Um, Another way you can do it is obviously a search, similar to what you would do on something like Google, is you can type in your search criteria. And what that does is we allow a few recommendations. So it brings up recommendations of what we think you're looking for. And that obviously shows all the Wimby products we sell here. Or you can just click this um, magnifying glass, which is the search or press enter, and it'll bring you to that search page where it has all those products. So what you can see here is all the different Wombi products that we sell. Uh, so whether it's the gel insert, the trach pod, the gastropod, the med pod, or what we're gonna talk about today is the Billy pod. You can also look on our homepage as well, and we have a section called the featured innovations, uh, where you see actually the trach pod featured there, which is one of the other Wombi products. But for today, what we're gonna focus on is the Billy pod. A few more things about VIA. If you want to learn more about us, you can just go to this About Us link here, or you can go to the company and go to About VIA. We know it's important for you to learn about who we are and what we do. So you can see a little bit about our, um, our mission, about what we believe in here. It's just universal access to the tools that enable quality healthcare. And it's about creating access and awareness to these products so that you can deliver the proper healthcare no matter where you are in the world. Um, you see a few things about our partners here, our company overview, you can watch videos as well. You can also in that company section, look at our customer testimonials. So you can see what our customers are saying, whether it's actual medical providers, different distributors of ours throughout the region, uh, or even we have testimonials from some of our suppliers or again, end users of the product. So this is a list that is only a small snippet of what we actually have heard from customers. So it's it's a fantastic thing to see uh, your, your colleagues and your counterparts in other parts of the world that are working with us already. You can also look more at the company section and go to our VIA rewards program there and learn about a rewards program where every time you attend, so things like webinars or you are part of our market insights interviews or every purchase you make actually helps you earn points that can be redeemed later for future purchases. But again, what we want to focus on today is our Billy pod for that obviously as you can see here it's a swaddle for neonates with jaundice so this is a swaddle that can be used during phototherapy treatment so if we go click on that and we'll take you to the product page the most important thing about our product page is basically that it's a brochure for each product so you can find every piece of information you need for your private inquiries and your government tenders because we've had so many inquiries come through we know the most important things for you so Obviously, there's different pictures of the device. You can see the close-ups, you can see in different environments. Uh, so you can see the materials, you can see something that's more without the baby there. Uh, we give you the title, obviously a short description, any regulatory approvals that you would need to mark in for your tenders. Uh, important to know just for quality standards. And then there's obviously more information about the description of the product, what it does, how it functions, what the benefits are, what makes it different than other um, competitors. So again, here for the Wombi products, you can also see the other ones that we sell. So if you wanted to also learn about the gastropod or trach pod, you could click over to those product pages and it would have the same level of information. Uh, again, a little bit more there about just basic additional information. The request a quote button obviously is for those of you on the line that are not verified distributors yet with VIA. Uh, so this is where your, your medical providers, NGOs, smaller groups that are looking directly for this product would be looking and they would request that quote 
obviously fill in your information and some one of our team members will follow back up with you or one of our distributors directly in that market will follow up with you with a product quote and information as well about uh, the product or shipping anything else that you might need so that's all very simple uh, obviously if you're one of our distributors you would see the price here once you're logged in and that would be a very easy transition over for you so that's everything you need to know about via global health and i'll transfer it over to chelsea our product expert for the billy pod uh, and we're going to have questions at any time you can type those into the question section of your uh, software and we won't answer them until the end but you can type them in at any time and we'll just keep compiling those questions so throughout the presentation if you have something that pops into your head just type it in there and then at the end i will moderate that after chelsea's presentation is over so with that, Chelsea, I'll transfer this over to you. Wonderful. Okay, so I am Chelsea Vale. I am the product expert for Wombi Billy Pod, and I'm happy to share with you guys today about this wonderful product that, according to uh, clinicians, is a game changer on the units where they're being utilized. Um, anyone that is um, currently using the Billy Pod has not only increased the um, quantity that they're ordering, but also the frequency at which they order. And uh, the debut hospital where uh, the Billy Pod was first used um, has increased their quantity almost 10 times what they originally started with. So uh, the product is very successful and we're happy to share with you today why um, this product is um, really affecting um, patients and families positively um, around the world at this point. Uh, the Wombi Billy Pod was designed for the underserved um, Billy population. This baby right here, um, is the son of a mother who had had several babies um, experience uh, phototherapy and treatment um, in hospitals before and had not had a positive experience. And she was almost in tears when um, I visited the hospital to allow her to trial the Billy Pod. And she said that this made um, an extreme difference in their hospitalization um, experience. So some of you are probably, um, let's see if I can get to the next slide here. You are probably all familiar with um, jaundice so jaundice actually affects 60 to 80 percent of newborns uh, are readmitted for jaundice um, 80 percent of, of, of preemies are treated for jaundice in the nicu and the wombi billy pod does come in a newborn to 13 pound size for um, the full term babies but it also comes in a preemie size which um, runs from about two pounds up to about um, seven pounds six or seven pounds uh, for babies that are admitted into the NICU um, for, for phototherapy treatment. Um, unfortunately, about 114,000 babies die annually from hyperbilirubinemia, uh, which we know as jaundice. And from what we're hearing from clinicians, um, it's not necessarily that they're not um, able to access phototherapy treatment, but it's because parents have a very difficult time allowing their baby to be underneath the billy lights, under a billy wand or a blanket. Um, and they're, they're flailing, they're screaming, they're upset. And you know, your first instinct as a parent is to pick up your baby and hold the baby. And unfortunately, they're not able to get their full treatment um, quick enough. And some of them um, are having some very negative effects. And some of that, of course, um, is fatality, unfortunately. So this is a patient population that um, we really wanted to be sure that we were um, supporting psychosocially and supporting the parents as well um, as the clinicians and making sure the babies are getting their treatment um, the full time that they need it, but also that they're comfortable. Um, unfortunately, um, we're not necessarily thinking about the psychosocial care of babies as much as we should be. And we consider this an empathy-based product. And this is a product that um, we hope is decreasing the stress of, of phototherapy and hospitalization for young babies. Um, babies are most often readmitted for uh, phototherapy to treat jaundice, costing some hospitals up to $2 million uh, a month. That was a statistic that was given to us by um, a creator of another uh, phototherapy treatment um, light. He said that some hospitals are just spending about $2 million a month readmitting babies for jaundice, and um, babies could actually be receiving their treatment at home. But what's happening is pediatricians are not necessarily willing to allow families to have their treatment at home because they, they know that parents might be pulling them out from under the lights. They might try to feed them. They might be holding them. And if they can't really be monitored, then, of course, we do have those negative effects of, of the jaundice um, on the bodies or, or even fatality. But uh, we have been told that the um, billy pod 
if it is sent home with families from uh, private practice pediatricians or even from the hospital, they don't need to be readmitted. They could do their treatment at home because the clinicians would trust that the parents would allow their babies to um, stay under the phototherapy lights and receive their treatment because they would be comfortable, calm, and happy and still allow um, full luminosity of the lights. Um, so with, with our product, whether or not that the families are using the uh, the wand, the blanket, um, there's other, you know, huts and things like that, but also in, in the hospital, regardless of what the hospital uses, the Billy Pod will still allow um, that device to be used without interrupting treatment. And that's really the beauty of, of this. Um, obstacles to phototherapy treatment, one would be a poor transition from the womb to the world. So uh, Wombi is actually designed to mimic the womb and it has a patented um, peanut shape. If you'll see, if you wanna see it on an actual baby, the peanut shape of the Wombi design allows for a range of motion in the shoulders and the hips. So that prevents the um, hip dysplasia or the cold shoulders and hips that happens a lot of times um, with swaddling. Um, Sometimes with phototherapy, there's little to no physical touch for days. And um, as I know, as a child development expert, um, physical touch is actually one of the most important things to help a baby feel um, that they can trust their new world, that they can trust their caregivers, and that they're loved. Physical touch is very important. And a lot of mothers have um, that, and fathers too, that they have that that first um, you know, vision of holding their child and holding them skin to skin and comforting them. And there's um, something so valuable about the transfer of um, pheromones and skin to skin contact um, that's valuable to babies. But um, if they're not able to be, you know, touched because they're getting phototherapy, at least we could be swaddling them and help them feel like they're being held, um, kind of simulating that, that comfort um, by providing boundaries to them. Uh, with, under phototherapy, if they're just laid underneath the lights and they're kind of splayed out, that's what we call kind of an infant stress response when they're splayed fingers and toes. They're kind of looking for boundaries. Um, they're also not getting flexion when they're looking for that. And, and it, it causes a neurological response that's negative. We've got this firing and, and rewiring of neurons that um, pre-wire them for stress, even in those, those early days. So by providing, providing boundaries for them, we're helping them feel comforted and held. We're also providing flexion. So the baby right here, we always recommend that babies are um, started out with their arms down, but because the fabric does allow a little bit of stretch, the baby can move um, hands over heart, which is very comforting. You'll see a lot of infants do this um, on their own. They could also get all the way up into a field goal position, which with this baby, because it's a doll, it's a little bit difficult, but babies can be up in the field goal position. They can um, bring their hands to midline, which strengthens the corpus callosum. All of that can be done within the confines of the swaddle. So we still have the boundaries. We still have the containment and the comfort that helps with the brain development, but also helps with the muscle tone. Um, we like to describe it as um, you know, a butterfly in a chrysalis, part of the process of, of getting out of the chrysalis is, is moving the wings out and the legs and kind of pushing out of the chrysalis. And if a baby is brought out too soon or um, perhaps it's being out and, and laid in an isolate, they're not really able to come out of the chrysalis, so to speak. They're not able to push up against anything they would be pushing up against a mother or a father's body when they're being held or um, in a, a swath like they would be at home. Um, and so this actually helps to support um, that emerging, that transition from the womb to the world pro by providing the flexion um, and in increasing muscle tone. So we've actually heard from physical therapists and occupational therapists that they've seen um, a decrease in, in physical therapy and occupational therapy because um, the Wombi products are being used um, in hospitals. Um, so we do want to avoid that, that negative neurological response by just pulling a baby from the mother and laying it in isolate and, and putting it under, you know, this, this harsh lighting. Um, also in America, we're starting to move towards more family-centered care. I know all over the world, this is something that um, hospitals have, have been, you know, preaching or encouraging for a long time. Family-centered care is really valuable. We want to be sure that we're not only just taking care of the, the patient and, and getting the numbers and getting them you know, discharged and moved on and, and healing, but that we're really taking care of the family as a whole and that we're taking care of their psychosocial, mental and emotional needs, um, especially with new mothers. We know that, you know, postpartum depression is a, is a very big issue. And for a new mother, if she has to have her baby removed from her and laid in an isolate away from her, at least we can show her that the baby is being taken care of, that their psychosocial needs are being met, that they're comforted and we've provided a womb-like environment 
for the baby as they're getting treatment. This really is, is helpful to families. And I will never forget the mother when, uh, when I visited the hospital to, to provide the Billy Pod, she was in tears and she said, this has made such a difference. In fact, he cries when we remove him from the Billy Pod and I have been able to get some rest because he is calm and he is happy and I'm comfortable um, completing our treatment here. Um, the responses that we're getting is just really amazing. Um, here's a quote from a mother um, that I got off of uh, whattoexpect.com when I was researching some things that mothers have ex um, expressed about phototherapy treatment. She says, we could only take her out for 30 minutes um, to eat. I sat by her crib. Oh, I'm sorry. Excuse me. Let me get my slides back up. I uh, sat by her crib. I feel so helpless. Um, you want to you know, pick up your baby to cry. And that's something that we hear all of the time. Um, that you know, mothers, they just want to pick up their baby, they want to hold them, but this actually um, helps with the crying and the flailing and, and the screaming. Um, swaddling newborns, we know it helps with not only flexion, but it does ease the transition from the womb to the world. It also aids in safe sleep. So the Wombi Billy Pod is based on the original Wombi that has sold over a million. Uh, Wombi has been in business for about 12 years and not had a single safety recall. Um, it's recommended by sleep specialists and sleep consultants, as well as a newborn care specialist and child life specialist all around the world because it is um, one of the best things to put your baby into sleep. Um, and this, this meets all of the standards from the AAP, putting an infant um, on their back in an isolate to sleep. Because of the design of it, if you'll notice right here on um, you know, this, this newborn, this tab right here, it comes up to, uh, to the neck, but it's, it's loose all the way around. The baby can't get their hands out uh, the way that they can with a blanket. Babies can kind of Houdini themselves out of a swaddle blanket and then uh, the loose blanket parts can come up over the face and that causes accidental suffocation. In fact, um, some competitors, uh, some other sleep sacks have actually had um, some recalls recently because they have loose parts and it's not safe for babies. Uh, but with 12 years running and over a million sold, um, Wombi is in, in good standing and, and is recommended for safe sleep. It also comforts baby neurologically to provide boundaries, to bring hands to midline. If you'll notice this little um, baby here has decided to bring hand over heart, one hand by the side. So this baby is, is, is finding their own um, comfort position versus some other things that are on the market. Um, nurses are having to go in and reposition the baby and flip the baby to prone or flip the baby to back, put the baby in midline and side and all of this, or it's the physical therapist or the child life specialist that are coming in and manipulating the patient. Um, but that's us deciding how the baby might be most comfortable versus in the Wombi Billy pod, it's the baby that's deciding, how am I comfortable? Where am I? Um, where, how can I self-soothe? Do I want to rub my belly? Do I want to rub my chest? Do I want to bring my hands to myself? Am I more comfortable in field goal position? Um, which a lot of babies will, you know, kind of get back into a fetal position. Um, and it's really a beautiful thing to see them self-soothing and finding their comfort um, and trusting that they're comfortable during their phototherapy treatment. Um, I, I kind of laughed out loud when uh, someone stopped by our booth once at a trade show and they said, uh, you, you, do you know what you have here? He said, you realize that your competition is, is paper. And I had to put that, that um, up here, this, that quote, because that, that did make me laugh because currently what's, what's on the market uh, right here is um, a, a paper device to swaddle infants. And it is translucent and does allow some luminosity, but only 86% um, versus our product has been um, tested in a SGS testing in a third party lab to show 94 percent off of a subject, uh, which means that it, it's about 96 to 80 to 98% on a subject. If you notice how it stretches out a little bit, this one is off of the baby. So this shows 94% luminosity versus this right here is 96 to 98% um, with the Billy Pod. So it's a much higher read. It's full luminosity. Um, some of these other products, they're, they're very expensive, they're disposable, so they're just flying through them with 60 to 80% of the population being readmitted for jaundice. You can imagine how many of these that um, hospitals are just running through. They also don't have any stretch. So if you notice right here, the baby has hands to mouth, um, which could be very comforting, but if uh, he or she were to wiggle around at all, um, they would be able to get out of the swaddle and it's not providing the flexion uh, that the Wombi Billy Pod does pr provide. Um, and also there's no thermoregulation. So ours, because it keeps the, all of the limbs and everything together, you could, you could be in fetal position in this. The um, baby is still able to be you know, warmed. Um, and actually you could put a Billy blanket around the baby and still receive phototherapy. And again, um, helping with um, thermoregulation. If you look down here at this other product, this is a 
a wonderful design right here. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, and this is what's being used in hospitals right now. But unfortunately with this, um, the baby can't be held because the light is um, un underneath the baby right there. If they are held, they're not able to feel the body up against them. Um, they might still be able to receive their treatment through the, the product if you could pick up the light and hold the baby, um, but they're not able to feel the body because it's up against um, the, the base of the baby like that. So sure, they're gonna feel like they're in air, but they're not going to be able to feel um, someone really, really holding them and, and, and comforting them. Um, also, the baby cannot move freely within a product like this. So we do have cold shoulders and hips. Again, the uh, clinicians and staff are having to come in and um, manipulate the baby um, a little bit. And um, if you were to get a product like this, it has to replace a hospital's current treatment um, versus the Wombi Billy Pod is actually able to be used in conjunction with whatever device um, the hospital uses. Like I said, whether it's a overhead lighting, an isolate, a hut, uh, a wand, a light, anything like that, you're able to use it. So I feel comfortable walking into just about any pediatrician's office or hospital setting and saying, hey, whatever you use for Billy, you can still use it uh, with this, whatever phototherapy device you use. Let's wrap the baby up in this and then continue on with regular treatment. We're not asking you to trial um, anything new. We're just asking you to swaddle the baby during um, phototherapy. Our patented peanut shape, just to reiterate here, um, allows for range of motion in the shoulders and hips. It allows full luminosity during treatment. The double zipper allows easy access to the patient for care. So I worked as a child life specialist before um, doing what I do now. And um, it was really um, one of the best things we did to support patients was um, swaddling them and then um, you know, we would swaddle them in what we called sort of a comfort hold and we could pull out different limbs that we needed to access. And uh, this product actually allows that as well. So the baby stays completely swaddled. Um, most infants or newborns, they have an IV either in the head so they could remain completely um, contained while the, they were being accessed um, or it's actually in the foot or the ankle. Uh, the pulse ox can be accessed through here through here, um, heel sticks as well, blood draws, anything, but also diaper changes. So uh, it would be very easy to do a diaper change without upsetting the baby by having to swaddle or, and, and unswaddle, but um, diaper changes are very easy with the double zipper um, on this product. Baby gets to stay right there, close the baby up. And as you know, with, with uh, Billy babies, or maybe you don't know, um, they often have very explosive um, diapers. And so uh, with this double zipper, allowing easy access to uh, the diaper area. It really does support family-centered care and families um, are not having to deal with complicated um, swaddle blankets or things like that. It's very easy just to unzip, access the baby, zip back down and, and uh, let them go back to sleep um, and rest. Our product are multi-patient use or single patient use. We have some um, hospitals that are sending families home um, with with the Billy Pod because they can still sleep in this at home. It doesn't matter if they're getting their phototherapy treatment. This is still a great swaddle sack for safe sleep um, at home. And um, they have all met, all of our products have met OSHA standards for hospital sanitation. Um, I mean, they can be washed and dried at extremely high heats without any change to um, color, fabric, shape, stretch, anything like that. It's not affected with um, the hospital sanitation um, procedures. And some hospitals simply just stamp their name on it if they're sending it out to other facilities. So uh, they can be multi-patient use. And like I said before, they can be used in conjunction with any phototherapy device that a hospital or a pediatrician's office is currently using. If you notice right here, um, this baby was using, there was a mat, a Billy mat that was placed underneath the baby. But when I walked in, he was only a few hours old. And so he'd only been doing his treatment for a few hours at this point. And he had um, a, a very unsightly rash all the way along his back and uh, his front side. And I mean, the mother gasped. She didn't even realize that, that he had this. Um, he was broken out everywhere. And, and she said, oh, my goodness, what do we do? And I said, well, let's just put him in, in the billy pod. And that will provide a little bit of a barrier um, to the, the light. And then we put the, the gauze mat. Uh, behind that, it was still allowing full luminosity, wrapped him up just the way that the nurse had before. The nurse came back in and she took a look. She said, yep, this is good. Um, he was able to still receive his um, phototherapy, but he was comfortable. He was calm and the rash went away. I think the mother said in about 12 hours. Um, so it, it protected that, that delicate newborn skin um, as well during his phototherapy. Um, I wanna reiterate the 96% luminosity, that's an average. So it is 94 to 98%. And it's one of the highest reads of any other um, product on the market that tries to um, provide the same psychosocial care for 
this uh, this patient population. When uh, this product was launched at the AAP conference a couple of years ago, there was another phototherapy product um, that we saw. We, it was a, a hut of, of sorts, and we walked up and we said, could we trial our product underneath your phototherapy lights? We're just curious what the read might be um, outside of the lab. And so we um, put the baby down, we wrapped the, them up in the Wombie Billy pod, and uh, the clinician neonatologist put the, her um, breeding device underneath the lights, and she was floored. She said, I have never seen a product have this high of a read, this this luminosity, and um, was really impressed, which of course we knew that, it, that we had a great product, but it was a wonderful validation to get um, from her with, with her phototherapy um, device and show that um, treatment will not be interrupted. And I think that's why um, products are are loving this. So I also want to reiterate that uh, the Wombi has sold over a million without a single safety recall. The Wombi Billy Pod is based on that original design of the Wombi with um, all of these safety features, double zipper, a uh, little bit of a stretch in our, our, our fabric that is um, our signature uh, fabric. The patented peanut shape allows for a range of motion in the shoulders and hips. The original Wombi has won over 20 awards for innovation um, and design, including an award from the Hip Dysplasia Institute for preventing um, hip dysplasia. And it allows infant to move uh, more freely, which is more developmentally appropriate than some other um, positioning, comfort positioning devices that are currently being used. Um, the Wombi Billy Pod can be purchased from uh, Via Global, and uh, Brian shared with you how to do that. Um, but I also want to show right here that um, the baby is, is, is able to be comforted during phototherapy. This is really beautiful because this product right here, this is actually shown, this is at the hospital. So if the baby needed to be um, suctioned or supported um, orally, um, a mother could very easily nurse her baby um, in this position without having to um, pick them up. If she wanted to just lift the head a little bit, she could do a bottle feed um, as well. I nursed my babies when they were um, lying down quite often, especially when they, they were in the NICU. It's, it's definitely doable right here, or these blankets could be undone. The foot um, could be accessed. Uh, this right here, I think, was a child life specialist providing a little bit of support um, to the baby. But um, again, we've just heard really positive things from um, hospitals that are currently using this product. Everyone is loving it. And what I would like to find out is, you know, 10 years from now, are we seeing a decrease in um, some of the uh, long-term effects of hospitalization and the negative effects of, of hospitalization on, on babies? Are we seeing an improvement in uh, psychosocial care from the very early stages? So um, I can turn this back over to Brian. And if there's any questions, I'm happy to answer those for you. Awesome. Thank you very much, Chelsea. That was extremely thorough. Uh, I think you actually answered a lot of the questions, but there's quite a few that snuck in that I think we're going to ask a bit more. Sure. Uh, so if you could actually turn your slides off so we can go full screen on you, because I think a lot of the questions are going to be related to the actual, or the first few I'm going to go through are actually about the Billy Pot itself. So maybe okay. a closer look would be a nice benefit. Um, sure. So I'll start with some of can the... Can you see me now? I can. Yep. Okay, full great. Screen. So I'll start with some of the more, um, I guess, tactical things first. So more related to the product. So you mentioned stretch uh, and a lot of people seem to like that, but is there, I guess they're kind of wondering when you mentioned flexion, is it stretchy or is it just allow for a small amount of stretch? I guess they're trying to understand how much stretch or how much is this going to really swaddle tightly or is it really loose? Yes, so it has just a tiny little bit of stretch to it. Um, enough of a stretch that it can support it, but you see this right here, this snaps back when it's, see that? So it's yep. a little bit of a stretch to allow the baby to move freely, but they're not going to be able to come loose. That's not something that we've heard um, from anyone. And like I said, over a million Wombies have been sold um, and it, it, it allows the baby to move within it. But when the baby is pushing up against a little bit of a stretch, that's what's building the muscle tone. That's what's providing the flexion that um, so many hospitals are demanding now um, for young babies. If you notice right here, it's built really long because as we know, uh, newborns and preemie, they can all come you know, different lengths uh, regardless of weight. And so what we always recommend is if it's not fitting the baby, you just put it right underneath like that. Now we've got flexion down at the feet. Uh, a lot of nurses will roll up um, or they put like a, a bendy bumper, which is a fabulous product, or they roll up blankets and put it underneath the feet, or they put it down up against the, the isolette for the infant to push up against, um, which is really good for, for the baby to have um, that foot bracing that um, clinicians are recommending. So it's okay. not too much stretch that's going to change shape. Okay. And that actually transitions pretty well to another question uh, or a few that came in about sizing. So obviously okay. it looks like it's a swaddle. Of course, you want it to be a little bit snug. 
but they're mm -hmm. asking, should it be uh, for sizing and fit? Should it be snug or sh should it be a little bit looser so it allows for movement within the, the actual billy top? It should be very, very snug. And in fact, um, I've had mothers, uh, when, when we first started trialing this, we were just working with a couple of mothers individually. And um, I had mothers call and say, I think it's too tight. I said, does it zip up? And they said, yes. I said, you probably, if you would have seen your baby in utero, you would have said it's too tight. Um, but it's not. You know, we, we want to keep the babies completely cocooned. And they are used to being in very, very tight quarters and really snug and, um, and really, uh, you know, form fitting. So as long as it zips up, it's the perfect fit, even if it seems uncomfortable. You know, to us, I don't want anything, you know, tying me down or feeling like I'm being, um, you know, straight jacket or papoose. But an infant is very different than that. They want to be, um, you know, in that tight fetal position. They want everything to be, um, you know, really snug. So the preemie size works for about um, two pounds to about six pounds, um, depending on, on on length and everything. And then the newborn size is about seven to 13 pounds. Um, and so that would be more for your full term infants or maybe your larger um, preterm infants. My boys were both um, eight pounds each, but they were pre they were considered preterm because they came a couple of weeks early, but they would have been perfect for a newborn size. So we recommend hospitals um, order, you know, both of, of the sizes, because um, whether you're in an NICU or mother baby unit or a pediatric setting, you still will probably need both sizes. That's perfect. Um... And I know there was a story towards the end you told about a different product where the infant actually was developing a rash, and that brought up a few questions from people. And you mentioned that of the material that's used on this because they're concerned about potential allergies with some infants that they've mentioned uh, with other products they've used. Oh, interesting. Okay. Not necessarily uh, swaddles, but just other neonatal products where allergens is is a concern with depending on the products, whether it's you know a latex or something like that. Yes, yeah. So these are completely latex free. This is a cotton spandex blend. Um, we are we're hoping to move to more organic, but um, I think what's happening with some babies, the allergens are not necessarily from the fabric that's being used, but it is the detergent that the hospital uses. Um, and that can happen with just about, um, you know, any any blanket um, or anything like that. I mean, of course, in the NICU, they do a little bit better job of using very, um, you know, gentle detergents and things like that. Um, but often that's what's causing it. It's not necessarily the, the fabric. Um, but with this, what we found is that it actually helped the baby get over the rash. It was unsightly to me. I hadn't actually even seen that before, but um, I don't know if it was the fabric of what was being used before or if it was actually the heat of the lamp that was right up against the skin. I mean, they had the mat right on the baby and there was a thin gauze um, up against it, which was fully translucent. Um, but because the heat, I think, I honestly think it was the heat of the lamp that was right up against the baby. Um, that's what was causing it. But in this, when we put the baby there, it was still getting the uh, luminosity from the lamp through the gauze and then also still through our device and it didn't interrupt treatment um, at all. And, and nurses were, were floored. They had never seen anything like that before. Perfect. And actually you mentioned the uh, detergent there and that's a good, another nice transition. Uh, a few people have just asked about how to sterilize the product. Can it just be washed normal in a, a gentle cycle or a normal cycle? Is there any recommendations for uh, detergents or drying methods just to know how to best use this product, but also to make sure it's it's lasting as long as possible. Yeah, so um, it, it passed standards for regular sanitation. So I think it was washed like 15 or maybe 20 times at extremely high heat, extremely high, high dry in a commercial setting. And there was no change to um, the fabric or the color or um, the stretch of it. However, um, that's worst case scenario. That's going to wear out the product a little bit faster. Um, even though that 15 to 20 washes was, was great and we were happy that, um, that it passed um, all of those tests and everything, we would recommend if you did do a gentle cycle, perhaps if the um, mother baby or neonatal has their own laundry service, sure, wash it gentle. It's going to be, um, it, sanitation is, is still going to take place because of the, the, the soap. And if you want to use hot water, you know, that's fine. Um, but a gentle cycle or maybe a large, uh, laundry bag, similar that you would do like delicates or something is going to make it last a lot longer. One of the reasons that we don't use Velcro, there's a, a lot of products on the market right now that use Velcro and that wears out, you know, incredibly quickly. But our zipper, if you want to see, is extremely high quality um, of, of zipper. This is one of the most durable, long lasting zippers. Um, and this tab and these snaps, they don't melt in the high heat. This is really um, strong, durable um, snaps. Everything is uh, double stitched. We're very particular 
um, in this. The creator of the Billy Pod has a background, um, so is most of things for um, her family and um, was very careful that everything was um, double stitched and reinforced um, to last um, as long as possible. And um, of course, we'd like to say that we don't want them to last as long as possible and you order as, as many as you want, but it does have a, a durability <laughs> factor to it that does make it um, you know, last a long time and be a successful product for the hospitals. Great. And do you have a, a recon recommended number of uses before replacement or any kind of a, a standard that you would recommend or is it just based on individual eye test? It's, I think it's 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 based on um, yeah I mean it's, it's it's how are they using it so um, you know each, some of the patients have you know lots of uh, of dirty diapers and they're reusing you know the the pods like again and again they're gonna be washing it a lot for that one patient in the in the couple of days or perhaps they're uh, running through them because of staining and things like that some hospitals have very large populations of of Billy just based on um, where they're located possibly like low income uh, matters and and different um, demographics and things for each hospital so they are increasing their, their frequency some hospitals don't have as many billy babies and so they have uh, just a few of these and of course they're lasting longer so it really just depends on the hospital and how they're utilizing them how they're washing them okay that's perfect um and then i guess i'll do one more here before i move on to there's a there's a big section on zippers uh for oh. questions but <laughs> okay. the last one is because they're asking obviously how many times going to be used do you have mm -hmm. a recommendation for how long or I guess the maximum amount of time you would recommend the the baby to be put in the swaddle, or is that just all based on individual? It's really based on individual um, because it allows for uh, the range of motion in the shoulders and hips. They could be in the entire time. Um, some families, it's really kind of up to the parents. The parents might say, well, no, I, I want them to be loose um, because if they don't necessarily understand the purpose of swaddling, maybe they're more comfortable with them being loose, but perhaps they swaddle them whenever they start to get anxious. Maybe maybe they're sleeping better in it, so they're only utilizing it at nap, or um, maybe the baby is um, you know, only in it you know, overnight. As a mother, I kept my babies swaddled all the time when they were little. I think the first couple of months, they were never not in a swaddle because they were calmer, they were happier, and they were always in a wombie because I trusted that they weren't going to get the cold shoulders and hips. They were able to move and wiggle and kind of snuggle in it, and then they were much happier. And I know that um, the design of this and the comforting um, during the first few months is really valuable to not only the muscle tone, but also to the brain development. So a lot of research shows that keeping infants swaddled in the first three months, which we now call the uh, fourth trimester, is uh, really valuable for strengthening the corpus callosum and keeping an infant calm and happy. And it's um, really supportive of the psychosocial development. So we'd recommend babies stay in this as long as they want. But of course, it is up to the family. And we're trying to support family-centered care as much as possible. Perfect. Uh, okay, so for zippers, the I know you said it's it's a zipper only. There's no Velcro, there's no button options, things mm -hmm. like that. So that's I think answered a few questions. There are a few just when you mentioned double zipper. There are, mm -hmm. I guess a few people that weren't quite sure. Does that mean it zips from the top or the bottom? Yes, that's actually a really great question because um, whether you have a, mother, a baby that's under phototherapy on a mother baby unit probably is not going to have any lines, any leads, anything like that. If you have a baby that's receiving phototherapy on a pediatric unit in a children's hospital setting or um, in a neonatal setting, they could have all kinds of wires. And that's another thing that I'm really glad that somebody brought that question up because the double zipper also allows for lines and leads and tubes and things to come out of the top. So this, what we always recommend is that the baby be placed in arms down, okay? We snap the top to hold the arms down and then zip it up. And if they have pull socks, the pull socks leads can hang out of the bottom of the product, the bottom zipper. If they have an IV or if they are doing a heel stick, that can come out of the bottom zipper. Um, some infants may even have like um, an IV in their belly button, so then we've got the, the lines coming out. Um, they could either, they can actually, some nurses have been weaving things through this. Um, it's not going to make the product last as long, so I don't recommend that. Um, but um, any, any kind of drains, EKG leads, anything like that can be weaved out of the top as well. Um, and so the baby can be, you know, receiving all of their treatment, all of their um, lines, tubes, leads, any of that can, can come out the top or the bottom. Okay, and so I guess that was, there's another one kind of just about access sections or access points. Mm -hmm. um, and there's one specifically saying, is there a way to have just the midsection of the baby open because of the double zipper? So that if they had like a drain somewhere in the, in the stomach section, you could. I would. I would recommend for that. Sure. I would recommend um, if you wanted that that section or 
you know, like a servo baby perhaps, or uh, sure. maybe a baby that was like post stoma, which very, very rarely are they doing the phototherapy if they've got a stoma or something. But um, then, yeah, you could, you could have that area um, open because the most important would be having the containment um, up around here. That's where the baby's going to feel like they're, like they're being held. Um, some of the more complicated cases, if there was a, a 24 or 25 weeker, of course, they're probably not going to be um, utilizing the billy pod. Um, if they have some really complicated things like that. But um, I did visit a baby um, in Dallas and just to kind of check up on the billy pod and see how they were doing. And the nurse laughed. She said, we have never even taken her out of that because the moment we unzip her, she starts screaming. So um, they kept her in that the entire time. And they said they had like strict orders. Do not take her out of the billy pod. She is comfortable. She is happy. She is calm. And she had very complicated um machines and equipment and leads and tubes and everything like that and they kept her in the billy pot just fine perfect um okay so you're released from the zipper section <laughs> um a couple questions I, I know you had mentioned that you would recommend the billy pod with any form of phototherapy treatment mm -hmm. uh but there was a question just about double and single-sided uh devices does this work with both double and single Yes, yes. So this this works with um, anything. So we have we have seen this used with blanket, with wand, with a hut that went all the way um, across the top. We've seen it used um, on the back. I mean, any device um, that's being utilized right now, you're able to get like you see, like it's 360 degrees of swaddling. So um, you're going to get full luminosity, even if you were to um, take the arms out and maybe the baby in prone for a little bit and maybe they still feel like they're being held a little bit um, they can still utilize this product okay perfect uh, so just a couple last ones um, mostly just surrounded around I guess we can you can do both at the same time but where is it made and then where has it been used mostly or where has it been sold to mostly um, I can't give away uh, exact hospital names because um, a lot sure. of we've, we've yeah sure we can't give exact hospital names but we can tell you that it is being utilized all over the US right now uh, we have um, some midwives that are um, big advocates for this um, in New Zealand at the moment uh, just recently we've been reached out to by researchers in the UK um, and Ireland that say our product is an answer to um, their, their research they said we've We've had some problems that we've been researching a solution to, and your product actually solves that problem. So um, this will soon be um, a worldwide used used product. Um, I feel like there was a second part to the question. Uh, so the first part was actually where it's made, and then it was oh, where, where it's made. Yes. I think you've answered the where it's used. I think people just wanted to know, I guess, generally countries, kind of which clinical environments are using it. Um, okay. But then, of course, people always want to know where is it coming from. Yes, yeah, so they are being used in um, neonatal, they are being used on pediatric units, and they are being used in mother baby. We have been reached out to by some um, pediatrician's office as well, also uh, rental companies. So there are some companies now that are uh, renting billy blankets for, for use and um, billy pads for home use. And rental companies have actually asked us if they can start um, utilizing the billy pod and selling the billy pods to to families so um, they're really being utilized everywhere that phototherapy is um, is being done uh, regardless of, of the setting um, they are currently being made um, in China there's a factory that uh, Wumbi has used for about 14 years right now um, and like I said over a million of those have, have sold and, and so they're they're a very uh, trustworthy factory we um, we really we've utilized them for a lot of other product designs and things like that um, but we are looking at a factory in Connecticut um, so that they are being made here in the US and we can actually um, get them out to um, everyone a lot quicker. Perfect. And I know you mentioned you hadn't had any issues with any of uh, the products sold. Do you have a warranty associated with that? Um, <clears throat> all of our products are, I mean, we, we have the warranty as, as far as how long, like how long they last. Um, it basically or with any, if, if, if there's a go wrong with the product, someone yeah. could definitely call us and let us know, um, that, you know, it, it was, it was damaged when it arrived or something like that. But we, we have, um, quality checks and things before the product, um, you know, goes out. Um, but of course, if there was something wrong with the product or if it didn't last, we would gladly replace that. Of course. Okay. Perfect. Uh, well, that is actually all the questions. Is there anything that we didn't cover that you now kind of popped into your head that you wanted to share any additional information that you didn't cover in your presentation? 
No, I actually feel like this was very thorough, especially those questions regarding the the leads and the tubes and everything. I, I had forgotten to mention that, but that's actually um, what all of our products are designed for is to swaddle an infant 360 degrees, but still work around their medical treatment. Um, we wanted to create something that not only supported the patient's needs, but also the family and the clinicians and uh, really, you know, affect change and affect a culture the way that we care for for um, patients' families, it's, it's not all about the numbers anymore. It's about the psychosocial care and the uh, emotional well-being of um, of the patients. I agree. Well, thank you very much, Chelsea. This was extremely thorough, as you said, even before we get to the questions. Um, so I really appreciate your time and, and appreciate your uh, coming on with us. Great. Thank you so much. I, I really do appreciate it. And um, if you want, if you have any other questions for us, I mean, uh, feel free to reach out. We're happy to answer questions for anyone that um, joins later or watches this later. We're happy to help. Perfect. So I'm going to steal the presentation back from you. Perfect. You can actually turn your video off as well now. Okay. You're, you're officially released. Um, <laughs> so again, for anybody that we had a lot of questions came in about uh, getting quotes, about orders, about shipping, logistics, kind of tactical questions. Uh, for those, again, just come to the site and request the quote. You can also email us at sales at viaglobalhealth.com directly, and we'll get back to you on those things. Uh, a few other people had asked about regulatory approvals, certain details that are, again, are on the homepage or on the product page here. So we didn't ask Chelsea that because it's it's already covered here. So if you ever have any basic questions that you want to come to the page and learn more about the BillyPod or, again, some of the other Wombi products here that are listed, you can do that. So if you watch the webinar and you want to learn more, you can come here. Or, again, you can email us at sales at vehiclehealth.com or just request your quote here and, and one of our reps will contact you directly. So uh, with that, again, I wanna thank you, Chelsea. I wanna thank everyone on the line and look forward to you joining the next via live product trading webinar. Thank you very much.